I say a lot of stuff on here, say a lot of stuff on Kip Reacts. I think, however, I've come to the impossible question. And what I mean by impossible question is not so much that there isn't an answer, more or less that there isn't a correct answer or there is a subjective answer for a variety of situations. What I'm talking about specifically is really to break it down to its core elements. How do you know if a person or a situation is genuine? So blown a bunch of horror binges, right? Look at some horror quote unquote footage of some ring da of some uh, ring doorbell cameras. Um, you know, talking, hearing about like uh, spooky sort of uh, uh, things such as, you know, like carjackings, um, being in the middle of nowhere alone and trying someone trying to break into your house, stuff like that horror content on the side of YouTube. And one thing stuck out to me as kind of an inciting incident with no answer. And that is if you are presented a situation in which you are uncertain of another person's intent, how can you be sure that it is genuine or if it is a trap? And I think it's interesting because the answer to this is inherently just unanswerable in one specific way because it's a very human answer. So we're going to go through a couple things, right? So let us say you are driving for delivery company, right? And in driving for delivery company, you get this address. You're like, okay, I'm going to pick it up, go to address. This address happens to be in the middle of nowhere. And, you know, the, the house is dilapidated. There's no lights on, right? And this can branch off into a number of situations where it is either contact delivery, where you have to meet the person, but clearly the house is abandoned. Or say you go up to the door, you say, hey, I got your pizza. Person opens the door just to crack so you can't see them. And then they, you know, they say, oh, well, let's go to the kitchen. Yeah, come in, right? You enter the house. The house is absolutely dilapidated. Floor slung through. They're, they're, they're not visible. They're in the kitchen yelling for you to come to them. Or... In the case of the contact delivery, they're like, oh, I see you. I, I see you. Just stay there, right? How do you know if a situation is genuine? How do you know maybe the person isn't disabled, right? The person could be disabled. They could have to go to the kitchen because maybe that's where they left their wallet. Or they could be going to the kitchen to enact a very popular horror scene. In the contact delivery option, how do you know that this isn't somebody that's just out with their dog on a night stroll? Or how do you know it's not people trying to slash your tires and carjack you, right? So that that inherently comes to, well, how, how do you answer this, right? How do you answer the question of, is this genuine or is this a trap? I think that more often than not with that situation, you could, you could reasonably infer that something like that would be a trap. And it is never worth your life, your safety, anything like that. At that point, just bail out, explain the situation like this isn't do, do not put yourself in a situation, especially if there's an invitation inside somewhere where you don't feel comfortable or you shouldn't really be in the first place. Right. So we're going to move on from that one, which is more reasonably answerable to say the 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 home invasion question. Right. Um, and obviously in the U.S., there's going to be a number of uh, number of comments in regards to my two world wars, right? Always carried on a nightstand, right? But in other places in the world, and even in the U.S. as well, there's not really states and uh, areas where that's that's reasonably a thing. What like we're gonna from the perspective of say a kid or a teenager being left home alone because parents have to go out for work, right? So reasonably, we're gonna disqualify that as a factor. You are in the middle of the night, you know, kind of notified that uh, there's a knock on your door, right? And, you know, it's, you know, knock, knock, knock. It's 1 a.m., right? Reasonably, someone knocking on your door at 1 a.m., generally not a good thing, right? We can all reasonably come to that conclusion. So we take that information and then we go in with that. Um, the reasonable assessment, because I did ask my dad on this, and it, can, it effectively comes down to check if someone's there. If not, you know, leave it alone. Happens again. Check if if still nothing, probably call the cops, get the cops involved, right? Um Someone knocks your home at you know on your home at 1 a.m. saying, "Help! I need some help!" Right? What do you do immediately? Yes, you're going to go into threat detection mode. You're going to go into panic mode. You're going to be trying to figure out what's going on. Why is this happening? Is it something that's actually relevant, or is it something that's a trap? Right? And there are situations where, say, uh, you do have an individual that will pose uh, as a front. Right? They're trying to get help. They're trying to get you to open the door. Trying to maybe even possibly invite you in to use the phone. Right? So, hey, I'm sorry, my car broke up down the road. And, you know, I, I need to use your phone. Right? Do you let them in? Do you not let them in? They could genuinely need help, but they could also not need help. In this situation, say that they are a front. You open the door, uh, you go to let them in, and then you have uh, two thugs on the side of this person just muscle your way in, and they, they rob you blind, right? Alternatively, this person could have had a car accident up the road. They could have... Um, uh, some sort of head injury, some sort of concussion, and then they they seriously need help. There has been a situation in which uh, I don't remember where it was. There was a actual situation where somebody was uh, missing their jaw, and there the front of them was covered with red paint. 
if you will, right? Um, but it was not so much that they were some horror movies uh, subject. It, it was that there was an actual car accident up the road, and it was a horrifying car accident, and they were trying to go to house to house to try and actually get help, right? To which police got called, police got involved, and that's fine. Uh, another incident that ended up happening, this is actually caught on Ring, cam- uh, ring Doorbell camera, is that there was a kid wandering you know trying to get home walking home from i think it was a school event after dark and he tries to get and there's clearly this black sedan following this kid right clearly some ill intention there and you try to open this door he tries to get in but his parents unfortunately had the door locked um before he came home and so he had to run to a neighbor's house uh, knock on the neighbor's door beg the neighbor to come in to get away from this car the stranger right now some people would absolutely let the kid in especially if they knew it say it was a neighbor right but if it's not a neighbor and you have a random kid at 10 o'clock at night trying to bang on your door saying, help, help, they're trying to get me. Do you know if they're, you know, once again, the thug situation comes up. Are they trying to rob you blind? How do you know in that situation if it's genuine or not? It is an inherently human question. Let's let's try one step further then. And I think this one could more rationally and reasonably be solved than the home one. You are in the middle of nowhere. So say, for example, if I was going to go drive from Boise, Idaho to Yakima, Washington, right? Say I was just going to drive there. Or say you're driving across Texas, right? Whatever. You're driving across somewhere, right? You're driving from France to Germany, okay? And you're driving middle of nowhere, right? Maybe some, maybe little if no so cell reception, right? And uh, in the middle of the night, you come across just a car parked in the middle of the road, right? The car parked in the middle of the road. Maybe there's uh, um, clothing or something strewn about. The doors are open. Something doesn't look right about the situation, right? You can't immediately identify anybody. You can't immediately see anybody. What do you do with this car in the middle of the road? Well, sir, there's 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 a variety of answers. I mean, first of all, you reasonably assess, is there somebody in the road or not? If there's nobody in the road, if there's no individuals visible, do you go and check the car out? Some people would say yes. Some people would say no. Um, that being said, there are situations where people in the middle of nowhere, maybe they do need help. Absolutely. Maybe their, uh, maybe their car ended up stopping. Maybe they were waiting for somebody. Um, but then we have other situations where the car is for all intents and purposes bait. And the moment you unlock your car, the moment you go to their car, um, you have people come out from the tree lines you know, on both sides of you and they try to carjack your car, right? Um, there's people that have even uh, allegedly been noted to hide in the tree line, holding up some speakers of say children crying, right? So Alleged instance is, you know, person driving down the road, middle of nowhere. Car is, uh, there's a bunch of clothes in the middle of nowhere. I think there might have been a car off to the side. I can't remember specifically from the account, the alleged account. And, um, you know, person, obviously, it was a trucker, got out of their truck, right? And they're just like, what's going on? And then they hear this child crying and, you know, they're trying to figure out what's going on here. But something doesn't feel right. They get back in their truck. They hear, they try, they turn their truck so that way they can look into, uh, into the forest off to the sides and they see someone holding up a speaker uh, that's, you know, playing that child noise, right? To which you just get out of there. Um, There's also, I believe it's between France and England. Uh, This is another thing that's actually called on like trucker dash cam where there's a bunch of refugees that pulled a giant log in the middle of the road to try and stop any trucks coming through. Um, And then they, at, at that point when the truck slows down, they all try to rush onto the overpass And they all try to, you know, uh, get into this truck to hold this truck up to get them to take them into England. Right. Which, I mean, that is terrifying in itself. Truckers are definitely underappreciated for some of the stuff they have to deal with, like trucker stories after dark. Some of the spooky shit, some of the stuff they've seen has always fascinated me because truckers are just like truckers are just built different. All I'm going to say, especially because if you're crossing in the state to state lines carrying a firearm is not necessarily a thing you can do but that's the thing is that you know this is actually something that's been caught on a trucker dash cam like you can find this on youtube where they try you know it's it's a it's a four stop and at a glance you're trying to figure out what's going on is this just a tree branch that is here what happens when you know a bunch of people a bunch of refugees just pop out and some of them are throwing they're throwing rocks at your truck um, some of them maybe have hatchets and axes potentially like you don't know what the situation is there is a very specific point that that's fascinated me between when a situation is perceived as safe versus the uh, the, the single point when you know a situation turns 180 and is in fact a dangerous situation to be in so to kind of circle back onto the initial discussion at hand and as to why uh, these que- I've been trying to actually find a reasonable and rational solution to this is that at the end of the day, you just don't know. There's absolutely been accounts of, uh, say, lady uh, breaks out of someone's car in the middle of a Walmart parking lot or a parking lot in general, right? And they say, help, I need help. And they ended up being a victim of kidnapping. 
there's also been instances where there's an Australian dash cam that caught uh, this lady running in front of someone's car and then this dude trying to stop the car being like, whoa, is she okay? But the car ends up speeding off because in their rearview mirror, they saw four thugs jump up behind them in Australia, right? Like a situation that can present itself as, oh, I just hit somebody. I need to make sure they're okay is in fact nothing more than a ploy, a feint, a trap, if you will. So I want to ask the question, when do you know? When is reasonable to know? And I invite everybody from all walks of life and all perspectives to answer this to help come to a you know more collective solution. I think that educating people about stuff like this happening is is a good thing. I think there's something in regards to like say fear mongering, right? And this also comes down to like anything can happen to you at any point in time. You can't control that. There's no reasonable or rational way to be able to, you know, a random person could target you tomorrow. There's no telling, especially when you start dealing with, you know, really rampant, bad mental health, obsessive, uh, uh, obsessive um, situations where somebody sees you and you're just the, the most perfect and beautiful person. They have to have you right. Pretty obsessive, pretty dark, pretty, you know pretty bad to think about right so that would be the fear mongering side of things so oh this can't happen to you at any point i acknowledge that it happens but how do we work together to make sure people are educated to be able to have the tools they need to succeed in the situation right such as you leave your kid at home your kid at home here's a knock at 1 a.m they know just not to answer it or say uh you're you say you're home alone right and you see somebody trying to break into your house right like you hear the door jiggle you hear them trying to force their way in what do you do? You're in the middle of nowhere. You have access to nobody, no one to talk to. You see a situation you can't explain, like, you know, car in the middle of the road instance. What do you do? What is the best rationale to go about that? So wanted to present the impossible question, if you will. Once again, not because it's necessarily impossible to answer, but because it is a hu inherently human question. There's not really a way to have a single answer if that makes sense or maybe you could have the start of a single answer but it branches off into too many things so i uh welcome anyone's expertise on the subject i welcome anyone's um uh, insight into this i welcome experiences as well and how you got through that situation or how this person got through this uh, situation obviously if it is say uh dealing with police if it's dealing with legal if it's dealing with military in any capacity please obviously observe any observe all uh, ndas opsec anything that you know would constitute not being able to answer questions or anonymize the best of your consent right i don't need to know it, i don't need to know that bad just thought this would be an interesting thing to help others out in case people hadn't thought about this so thank you everyone for watching if you like this little rants let me know see you in the next one